Hello, good morning from Lahore. I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Khopa, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As we're discussing thanatology, and this is the fifth lecture of the series. And the learning objective of today's lecture will be that in this lecture we'll learn lividity. What is postmortem lividity? What is the normal color of lividity? How it progresses? And how we can determine that it is fixed when its distribution, where it is distributed in the on the body, and effect of change of position after death. Then what have, will happen to the postmortem lividity if the body is in water? So starting with the topic hypostasis, it is also called as postmortem lividity postmortem staining and liver mortis. So these four names are synonymous and commonly used for postmortem staining. Postmortem lividity, this is the picture of a dead body showing the postmortem staining developed at the back. It's a mechanical phenomena and it is defined as the staining or discoloration of the skin and organs of the body, that is internal organs of the body due to accumulation of blood because of the gravity and rest of circulation, resulting in distension of toneless capillaries and veins of the dependent region. So the blood flows to the dependent areas which are dependent in a position where the body is lying. Normally, if the body is supine position, face facing upward, then the whole back is the dependent and the body will, the blood will flow down to the back of the body. Also defined as capillovenous engorgement of toneless blood vessels of the dependent areas of the body as the blood gravitates to those positions after death. What is the color of lividity? The color of the postmortem hypostasis or lividity is the same as the color of the blood at the time of death. Initially, it is bluish pink normally. Later on, it becomes bluish purple or dark blue in color. And in fair colored skin, this color can better be appreciated. Now the development of lividity, how it progresses and why it develops. After somatic death or clinical death, the circulation stops and blood remains in fluid form for some hours. Oxygen in the blood, which is carried in loose combination with hemoglobin, is being supplied to the tissues till the molecular death. And when no more pumping, now no more pumping of the blood by heart is there, oxygen is gradually decreased and hemoglobin become reduced, blue in color. Then due to gravity, this blood flows down to the dependent areas of the skin and internal viscera. Now the prog progression, how it progresses. Initially, it appears as small, dull, mottled patches, which appear within 20 to 30 minutes after the death on the dependent parts of the body, which then increase in size. These smaller, smaller patches police together and become broader patches and they are now in a broader shape within next three to six hours. Then postmortem lividity will be fixed in eight to 12 hours. That means now it will not change its position. 
if we change the position of the body, it will remain on the dependent region which was previously dependent. So initially, it starts as small patches within 20 to 30 minutes after death. And in three to six hours, these small patches coalesce together to become broader patches. And in next eight to 12 hours, this lividity becomes fixed. So this is the progression. So this thing is to be remembered that this phenomenon is not due to coagulation of the blood, but it is due to stagnation of the blood in the dependent capillaries and boneless veins. How to determine that postmortem staining is fixed? If the pressure of thumb is applied on that area, that you press that area, and if the lividity bleaches, that area bleaches, it means the lividity is not fixed yet. And duration is less than six to eight hours. It has not fixed. As this discoloration is due to filling in of the blood vessels, it will not appear on the areas of contact flattening. That is, when the body is supine, the back of the head, back of the shoulder, back of the buttocks, and back of the calf, which is touching the surface on which the body is lying, those are the areas of contact flattening because of the pressure of the weight of the body. And in these areas, the discoloration will not be seen. Now the distribution of hypostasis. Mainly it is affected by two factors. Number one, the gravity, and number two, the position of the body after death. The areas of distribution are mainly externally on the skin and skin of the dependent parts. Similarly, internally on the viscera and on visceral surfaces, which is the surface which is dependent or the dependent position of the body. So externally, as we know that commonly after the death, the dead body lies in supine position, that the face is facing upward. So the postmortem lividity develops on the dorsal aspect, that is the back of the head, neck, back, extens extensor surfaces of the upper arm and the flexor surfaces of the lower limbs. So these are the dependent areas when the body is in supine that is facing upward. It is not present in the areas of contact flattening, as I've told you earlier, because of the pressure in those regions, the areas are flattened because of the pressure of the weight of the body and the toneless capillaries will be compressed and the postmortem staining will not be seen there. The areas of contact flattening when the body is, is supine, back of the head, back of the shoulder, buttocks, calves and heels, they are the areas which are in contact and in these areas the postmortem staining will not be seen. As the postmortem staining will be seen in between the areas of contact flattening. It is also absent over the areas of tightening or constriction due to tight clothes. So the pressure because of any protruding object, object or any constriction in those areas, the postmortem staining will not also be visible. This is the back of the dead body and you can see the areas of contact which are devoid of uh, staining and in between the postmortem staining is developed. And this is a protruding hand which was pressing the skin and break because of the pressure the postmortem staining didn't develop there. Similar this is the front of the abdomen body was prone and the hand was on the abdomen and pressure point was there and postmortem staining didn't develop. And this is another view the hand was at the back and postmortem staining was not developed because of the pressure point. Now the distribution of the postmortem lividity. Externally, when the body is in supine position, the postmortem lividity will be found on the dorsal aspect of the trunk, posterior aspect of the head and neck, 
and dependent areas of the upper and lower limb. And it will, it will also be more marked on the lobes of the ear, the lobes of the ear and the tissues under the nail fingers. When they are dependent, they can easily manifest the postmortem stain. So this is a typical uh, postmortem distribution when the body was supine. This is another picture showing the postmortem staining. <clears throat> so if the body lies on the front after death, that is the front of the body is facing downward, then the postmortem staining will be distributed on the front. If the body remains in sitting position after death, then the hypostasis will be present on the lower half of the trunk, thighs, legs, and forearms, which are dependent in that sitting position. Similarly, if the body remains suspended after hanging in uh, asphyxial death, the hypostasis will be confined to the lower abdomen, thighs, external genitalia, leg, and the hands. And this is a picture showing that the lower limbs the upper limbs, lower half, and the legs, they are showing the postmortem staining most marked. This is another picture. The area was the uh, right side or left side was dependent and the hypostasis were developed there. Then what will happen if the position of the dead body is changed after death? If the position of the body is changed before the postmortem staining is fixed, because we know that it takes six to eight hours to develop on and eight to 12 hours to fix. So if after eight hours that when the postmortem staining has been fixed, the position of the body is changed, these patches disappear if the position is changed before they are fixed. This situation is when the position of the dead body is changed before the postmortem staining is fixed, then the patches disappear from the original position and slowly appear, reappear in the new position. But some degree of lividity remains in the original area. That means faint traces remain on the original area, which was previously dependent and body was changed its dependent position before the postmortem staining was fixed. It will reappear in the next dependent region, but faint trace mark marks will remain there. But if the position of the body is changed after the fixation, that is after eight hours, when the postmortem staining has been fixed. Now, when the position of the body is changed, the body will, the blood cannot flow now to the next dependent region. So it will not be shift. That means when the postmortem staining has been fixed, if the position of the body is changed after eight hours, now the postmortem staining will not change its position. This is uh, the picture. The body was lying prone and the front of the legs and the feet were they were the dependent region. But later on it was found supine, that face facing upward. Now the body was facing upward. Now you can see that the front was the pressure point where the postmortem staining was previously present and fixed. Now the body is in supine and postmortem staining has not been shifting to the antigen. When the, what will happen when the body is in water? In death due to drowning, when the water is stagnant, the body usually floats with face downwards with the back of the chest at the highest level. So lividity is most marked on the face because it is dependent as these parts being heavier become dependent and remain lower than the rest of the body. And in drowning, when it is in the running water, the body is constantly changing its position because of the flow of the water and not enough time will be given 
or is available for the postmortem staining to get it fixed. So hypostasis will not be developed, developing at any part of the body when the body is in running water. So summary of this lecture is that we have learned what is the definition of hypostasis, what is the color, how it progresses, and how to determine when it is fixed, then distribution of hypostasis, and effect of change of position after death, what will happen to the lividity if the position is changed, and what will happen to the postmortem standing if the body is in water. So thank you very much. This is all about the lecture on hypostasis. We'll continue this topic in the next lecture. Take care. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name, Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar. Thank you very much.